Hello everyone, and we're going to talk about uh, the web browser module and the requests module. Um, the web browser module for this chapter, it's really just an FYI, um, kind of useful if you're automating the launching of web pages. There's some other things you can do with it, but uh, requests and beautiful soup are going to be super important for this week. So. Uh, first off, the web browser module, um, again, you can uh, control and launch um, web pages. So uh, this week for the lab, we're scraping phone numbers using uh, open source intelligence gathering or OSINT. Uh, so we're going to use this web page, catalog.trici.edu slash about, about slash important phone numbers. So let's launch the web page. So we're going to do some things in idle this week. Um, so we're going to import web browser. All right, import web browser. We have imported it. Let's open it in the web browser. Web browser dot open. And uh, oops, we'll put this string literal in here. Hit enter. And there we go. It opened up a second tab of this web page. Um, that is that's pretty much it for web browser. That's kind of all I care about. It's at the very beginning of the chapter. Um, what's more important that we're going to use for our lab is the requests module. So you had uh, installed it using pip was the first video this week. Um, now we're going to import it and we're going to use it. So we do that through import requests. Hit enter in idle. You're good. Request is now imported. So the first thing that we want to do is uh, grab the web page. We're going to grab the same web page we just used. So you can do that using the request.get uh, method off the requests object. And you want to save it into a variable. So the variable will be the response variable. Uh, we're going to call it res for response equals requests dot get paste our web page in here hit enter there we go now uh, what is the type of this of res it is a request models response object and there's a bunch of things you can do with this um, let's check out the the status code res dot status code uh, that's going to be 200. So HTTP um, uh, in the RFC, a bunch of different status codes. Uh, 200 means OK. Everything was good. Um, that, if you want those constants, those are restored in requests.codes. Um, so for instance, requests.codes.ok. Okay, that will equal 200. Um, there's other ones, forbidden, 404, file not found. Um, it will get back the request code that was uh, passed back from the attempt to download the URL. All right, so um, you want to make sure that you've downloaded the uh, web page uh, before proceeding. Let's say we were going to look at the text of the web page. May not return OK, might return file not found, might return forbidden. But we want to see. So you can call, uh, after this, you'll want to call the res.raise for status method. And what this will do, it will raise an exception if. Um, the request object, or sorry, the response object doesn't have an acceptable status to continue parsing. All right, um, there's a bunch of stuff in this chapter about saving the response to disk. That's not going to be in the lab this week, but it's really important that you learn it. Um, so uh, you can uh, look at the book for that. But what we really care about is um, uh, the text from this web page. Uh, so um, let's jump back to here. Uh, so in your lab this week, uh, we'll see how do we how do we grab the uh, 
the information from the web page and put in a beautiful soup, which we'll talk about in the next video, you'll see res.txt. So let's go back into idle. Res.txt, what is it? Squeeze text, 173 lines, double click to expand. This is the whole web page. So the dot text, the text attribute on here, text property, is uh, the text we downloaded from the web page. This is going to be the same thing. Now it's obviously going to show you the uh, escape lines. Uh, but here, if we right clicked on the page and viewed page source, this is what you're going to find. So that's what we're doing with the requests object. So we're where am I going? My idle here is, uh, you know, we're getting the URL. We are creating, in doing so, we're saving it to a response object. And then we're asking what the status code is. We're raising for status. So we're making sure that web page was up and running in there. And res.txt. So whatever you named your response variable, here it was res, but the response variable dot text returns you the full source of the web page. So we're going to take that. This kind of goes into the next video of what do we what do we do with this? We could run regular expressions on it if you'd like, but it's not very efficient uh, to run a regular expression on something as large as this or large. There's obviously much larger web pages or larger data sets, but what you want to do is parse this. Uh, HTML. HTML essentially is just XML. Uh, it's a uh, markup language that has a hierarchy, so it's hierarchical. You can go through elements, and we're going to use beautiful soup uh, to parse that. Now, between this video and the next video, um, I'm going to post some other videos that you should watch regarding how to use the Chrome developer tools an introduction to HTML, an introduction to CSS and selectors. It's not what this course is about, but you need to understand it in order to do the lab this week, really in order to understand the concepts that we're talking about. Remember, HTML, not a programming language. It's a markup language. Same with CSS. These are style sheets, not a programming language. So it's super important that you understand these file formats, that you understand these markup languages, because you're going to use them uh, to parse data. So that's it for this video. Again, next one, in between this and the next, make sure you watch uh, the videos on how to um, deal with HTML, deal with CSS. Then we're going to get back together and we're going to parse it using beautiful soup, which we'll use for your lab this week.